changes we had to share. Something, I don't think I've ever been this far, no. You've never been to Scotland? <laughs> no, I've never seen the point. Oh, it's grand up there, man. Scotland. Beautiful. So is Northumberland. It's just round here, it's a bit manky. Give it a chance. Well, Margie hasn't got a phone. Will you ring me? All right. Right, we will do. Talk to you later. Turn Turn off. Then. Turn off. Hey, Oz. You're separated from Marjorie. Won't this be a bit awkward, like? What? Well, you know, just turning up on the doorstep expecting to dust for a couple of nights. Particularly with a mate tagging along. And there'll be three of us when Barry arrives. Oh, I'll be out. I'll be out. It's only got a couple of nights. Anyway, I'm still a bloke up Piers of Rent, don't forget. Ah, yeah. Well, I'll read, I'll read. Well, he's not recently. He's been a bit lumpy recently. But I'm still the official council tenant. Did you see her when you got back from abroad? No, she had a bear on with her sisters. It's a bear I want to see, actually. I brought him a real poker jacket from this day. It's American football, yeah. Dolphins. Oh, nice. I'm not freaking out. How old is he? How old is he? Uh, let's see. He was born a year in Newcastle, got relegated, so that would make him uh, 10, 11, 10 or 11. I hope you'll be warm enough in that spare room, Wayne. We don't use it much, so there's no heat in there. Don't go to any bother, love. I feel bad enough about landing myself here as it is. Ah, oh, it's only for a couple of days, pet. You're right in Spain, eh? Mm, if you ever get there. Well, we got the off, haven't we? That's why we dragged ourselves up here. To your lovely metropolis. I know, but things don't always go according to plan where Ali Fraser's concerned. Oh, I was still on the payroll, Pat. That's what counts. Nev, can I borrow your bathroom, mate? I want to freshen up a bit. Sure, straight up the stairs. It's not very convenient, this, you know, Neville. What is it? Having Wayne here? Why not? I've got enough to do at the hospital without coming home and cooking meals and things. Well, you don't have to, man. We're used to looking after ourselves. But why can't he stay in a hotel? He drives a BMW, so it's not as if he can't afford it. Why didn't you tell us this last night? I phoned you last night to say you can win. St stay, and you said, yeah, fine. You stand next to you in the pub, Neville. I could hardly say anything else. All right, I'll tell him it's not convenient. You will not. Look, you don't have to get anything in. We can down the pub and get a scotch egg for our dinners. Oh, and how does that make one look if I can't accommodate a guest in my own house? This is one of them arguments that neither of us can win. Oh, I'm sorry, Neville. It's just that we've seen so little of each other recently. And now you're off to Spain. I just thought it'd be nice if we could have a couple of days on our own. Look, I've been thinking, if the money's as good as I say it is, I'll fly you and Debs out there towards the end of the job. Give you a bit break, a bit sunshine, eh? Really? Well, yeah, you deserve it, man. It's very tempting. But what would the lads say? Oh, I didn't give a toss what the lads would say, Brenda. Eh? Kipping down with them lot every night's not my idea of fun. Seems a bit extravagant. I mean, all I wonder is, wouldn't we be better off doing up that spare room?
Very nice. What floor are you on? Four. Nice view, then. Oh, terrific. At night, you know, when you're standing on the balcony with your martini tumbler, clocking all the twinkling lights down below, you could warn I'd be in Manhattan. As long as you keep your eyes shut, like. All the streets are open. Right. Right. Well, yeah, great. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? more like, I think, isn't it? Yeah. You all fit under the table quick enough, didn't you? Look at this. 26 inch pie. You pay that, did you? Now, oh, where you are. I might be a couple of weeks behind with me payments, but that does not give you the right to barge in here as if you owned the place. I do own the place, actually. Mate, I don't only recognise it, like you've done a nice job with the decorating. Do you mind telling me who you are? <laughs> who I am? Ask the last man, she'll tell you who I'm is. Oh, she will, will she? Yes, she will, will she? Aye. Jean, get yourself in here. Who's Jean? Hello. Oh, sorry, I didn't know I had company. So, this is what goes on, is it, when I'm on the back shift? What goes on? I wasn't born yesterday. This bloke's even got his own key. Hold on, hold on. I think there's been a bit of a mix-up here. Uh, you live here No, do you? What does it look like? Ah, well, you see, the last time I lived in Newcastle, this was my gaff, see? So I just naturally assumed me wife and kid would still be here. Oh, aye. Aye? Osborne. Does that ring a bell? Osborne? Me wife was called Marjorie. That's right. That was the name of the previous tenant, Douglas. There you go. In fact, there's a lot of post here for her. Did you leave a forwarding address out like that? No. Oz, what? I reckon we should go. Find somewhere else to dust tonight. I'm, I'm not interested in finding somewhere to dust, man. I'm interested in finding me kid. I suggest you ask the neighbours, pal. And I'll have the key, if you don't mind. No, Neville, not here. What? It's not the right place. We're in our bed, in our house, at night. Well, would you rather do it at the squash club? Wayne's here. Well, what's it going to do with Wayne? I'm not doing it with him here in the house. Why not? Because he'll hear what? Oh, man, he's not here, is he? We can hear him gargling, so he can certainly hear us. Well, he can hear what? If you'd mentioned this last night, I certainly wouldn't have asked him to stay. You should have thought it through. Oh, Neville, it's just too inhibiting. I never used to say that before we were married, when I used to come round to your parents' place. That was different. My parents went to bed very early. They were sound sleepers, and you used to have Match of the Day on at full volume. And you used to watch it. We'll not be listening, Manny. That Sony Walkman never leaves his ears. I mean, how's he going to hear us with Twisted Sister blasting into his, his brain cells? He might. You're not, man. It's not like we're noisy, Brent. It's not as if you're a screamer. What? Well, it's not like you're one of them frenzied females you hear about, you know, that scream, shout, and bark. Bark? You want us to bark? Shut up, man, Brenda, we'll hear us. How are you doing? Thank you. It's been a lovely evening. It's not over yet, is it? Oh, come on, Dennis. You hate dancing. I know I that, but, uh... I thought if you came inside, you see, I could uh, show you my favourite bits of love made tender. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I've got to be up early in the morning for work. Well, it's only half past eleven. It's not just that. Oh, no, don't, don't worry about our norm. I tell you what, I'll take her down the cellar and I'll chain her up against the wall. <laughs> eh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean, though. It's her house. I just don't feel very comfortable, that's all. Yeah. I just haven't seen you for it. Ages, have I? Off to Spain in a couple of days. 
You just thought we could have a chat, you know? Well, perhaps a coffee. Great. Here, I'll do one for you. Ah! Two horrible men! Any chance of a cuppa? Who's it talking to? Keep your voice down, will you? My sister's asleep, man. Get in there. I hope we didn't sabotage any of the romantic tete a tete. Oh, well, you <laughs> didn't help. But what's she then to talk to, car? Nobody you know. Well, obviously, if I knew who she was, I wouldn't be asking you who she was, would I? I call her Christine. She had a very nice motor. Would you all ask you my glasses then? Eh? <laughs> you the fair on, eh, Moxie? Ah, yeah. Oh, it's nice house, though. Isn't it? It's lovely, eh? That's drilling, I think, you know. Who don't owe the dubious pleasure of your company, Tony? Hey, Dennis, I happen to have had a particularly fraud day to day, I can tell you. Well, he can tell you too much sort of day I've had to day, Moxie. Particularly fraud, then. Why was that? Was the Portland shut, was it, for renovations? Oh, oh, oh. No, this is Marjorie. She's done a runner. Oh, man. What are you talking about? Oh, what's he talking about? What he's talking about is, you know, me flat, me home. Can't zoom in today, Marjorie doesn't live there anymore. Well, you not try a mother, she must know. Ah, oh, she knows, she knows, the mother. Not tell me, though, would you? No, she said Marjorie's got a chance to better herself now, you know, go through the life like after all these years of neglect. I'll read, I'll read, Moxie. Says she read. doesn't want him showing up at this point in time and bollocksing it all. I'll up, read, man, Moxie. You never need the whole nine yards, thank you. Look, I'm not bothered about them. I just want to make sure my bairn's been taken care of, that's all. It's a bit late in the day for that, isn't it? What's that supposed to mean? Eh? Well, you've hardly been the doting parent, have you? I've been abroad. I've not been working for the Burns future oh, while abroad. Look, Osman, when you came back from the States, you came up here, didn't you? But you mustn't have gone near that flat. You would have found all out then. Well, that's where you're wrong, you see, Dennis, because I'd only been back for what it was. I'd not, so I was still in the Portland. And I bumped into Eddie Huggins and... Oh, what a skin ball. But he was telling us that their lass had told him that Wallace had went to stay in Blackpool with her lass and she dragged the bands over there so I had to doss at me mother's that neat. And then the next morning I seen you and you told us about the job. Aye. And, well, you know, the rest history. Aye, well, look, tomorrow, right, you can go and talk to Marjorie's friends or go to that place where she used to work. So tomorrow I'm worried about no Dennis, it's tonight. What do you mean? Well, we need some way to keep them. Well, I've promised Moxie you're not. What you mean? Yeah, look, you can't. Well, we not? promised to put Bomber up, man. And a couple of eats. Just the neat would be all right, man. But why don't you go to your mother's? My mother's? It's 11 o'clock at night, man. I can't knock her up at this time, which is more than I 70 Well, you should have age. thought about that before the pub shut, shouldn't you? But I haven't got her a present. That, that constitutes a rigorous proof. But for other shapes, like this one, for example, it's not quite. We never so had an open university fact, when we were kids, did we? Secondary well, modern for us, the wind coming through the broken English windows, teachers who didn't give a toss whether you got O levels or Boston. Victims of the system, Moxie? Yeah, uh, yeah. Nowadays, though, I mean, you get up, stick the kettle on, sit in front of the telly, and four years later they give you a degree in physics. Great. Oh, hey. I think there's a bit more to it tonight, you know. I mean, er. Uh, Getting up at six o'clock in the morning to watch this sort of tackle's not that easy, is it? Yeah. True, yeah. And I mean, then what happens if the old man's on the cow and they keep me possessing the telly, yeah? The lawn and cattle truck then, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. But education, though, I mean, that's the key, isn't it? You tell your kid that when you find him. Oh, I will do. It's a chip, you know, what's doing all this? A silicon chip. There you are. Transformed the whole of late was one. Ah, that man, the chip. <laughs> Technology, industry, manning levels. Don't they also use it to make women's tits bigger? Aye, aye, it's got loads of different applications. Who's that? Morning. I see you've found yourself some breakfast. Aye, aye. Well, we'll, re we'll replace it, mate, like, you know. He's with Ali Fraser. Oh, we, uh, we, we thought you'd gone to work. I've been on the trail of his Marjorie. Oh, that's not your job, Pipman. I'll get onto that one, so I'll wash in a shave and that, you know. 
Well, if you'd like to know, your rod is at Walker Street School, and if you could possibly get yourself together by about four o'clock, you just might be able to see him. Rod! Rod! Hello, son. You all right? Not bad. Not bad, eh? Why, are you shooting up, aren't you? No. No, you wouldn't do it, Uh, well, look. Come round, I've got a present for you. Come round the gate. Yeah, I don't know. I've been out a little thing. I didn't realise you'd be so big, eh? but try it on. This is this is a Puka American football jacket. It's from America. Who? You know. Miami Dolphins. Right. Super Bowl. Bush has got the Steelers. Before? Support them? I didn't think you'd even heard of them. Channel 4, every weekend. Favourite sport. Oh, well, what's happening in Newcastle United? Rubbish. Well, uh, that's all, isn't it? Don't we? Look, I know we haven't seen each other for a while, like, but, uh, uh, do you want a nice scream or something? No, I've got to catch a bus with them. What is your mama come and meet you at the gate? I'm ten, Dad. All oh, right, aye, of course. Well, how about we'll get you on the bus? I'm in my mum's gate at the five. Oh. Where are you living, though? Bennett, Sandro's house. Who's Sandro? That we live with, an Italian. Is he? Well, look, I know you haven't seen much of me for the last couple of years, but there's reasons for that. I mean, I had to go and draft in abroad, you know, because there's no work around here. And, well, you see, me and your mother... Do we like each other? No, 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 it's not that. Uh, it's just that... It's just that, well, grown-ups tend to have their ups and downs. Just like you. Well, all right, son, that's as may be, but uh, that doesn't mean I don't like you, you know. Doesn't mean I don't love you. So from now on, you and me's going to be seeing a lot more of each other, are we? Uh, we have to be quick because we've got to live in Italy from next month. No, I can't leave your number. I'm in the north of England, aren't I? Look, if this Spanish job comes up, I'll be away from it, right? So I just thought maybe we should get together and... All right, if you can't, you can't, OK? Give me love to your folks. Hello, Wayne. Did Neville get you some lunch? Yeah, she had some cottage pie with Debbie. Where is Neville? Table down the park. She's a lovely kid, eh? Yeah. Fancy some tea? If you're making some. Here, look. I used the phone. That should cover it. I'm sure that's too much, Wayne. Well, I did rub it on a bit, and it was to Germany. Oh, uh, find any wife, will you? Yeah. You ever said she was in Germany? She visited her family. Yeah. Fancy some toast and starving. Well, actually, Krista isn't visiting her parents. She's gone back there. She's pregnant. That's wonderful. No, it ain't. No, she's not sure if she wants to have it, but she is sure she don't want to stay with me. I blew it, Brenda. See, I really wanted to be married to her, you know, but I just guess I was too immature to be married. Other women? Yeah. Look, the point of loving someone is to prove it to them, right? which means giving all the rest of the birds the elbow. Not responding to every bit of skirt that passes you in the street. Not being tempted by any bird that flashes you in the boozer, you know. I mean, I wanted it both ways, and that's out of order, isn't it? I'm afraid it is, Wayne. 
Hey, look, don't tell Neville about this, eh? I don't want the lads to find out. You're the only woman I've told about this, apart from Hazel. Is Hazel one of the other women? No. No, Hazel. Barry's fiance, Hazel. Oh, Hazel, yes. Sorry. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? I find it so much easier to talk to birds about this than fellas. Suppose that's the old ego, eh? <laughs> you know, Wayne, if you could tell Krista what you told me and Hazel, well, that might make all the difference in the world. No, no, it wouldn't. Not unless I changed, and I can't see that happening, love. I mean, basically, I want every woman there is in the world. Present company excluded, of course. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, no, 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 not that I don't find you attractive. I mean, no, I mean, I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for mate's burden, no, no, I would... Uh, not that I wouldn't want to, oh, because if you know what I mean, with me mate, and you're very, so we could... I think I understand, huh? Wayne. It's not uncommon in men of your age. You seem to feel you have a need to prove that your sexual magnetism still works. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's it then, eh? Jam a marmite. I'm going. What? Your husband wants to see you. No, can it be? It's been ages since anybody's seen that beggar. He says he's your husband. Oh, is he Italian? Italian? Uh-huh. Oh, with them biting of anything. Big lot with a hole in his teeth. Oh, my God, it is me husband. I don't want to take over, will you? Brickwork. Hello, Marjorie. When did you get back? I've been back in the UK a couple of weeks now. I came up here last night. Now, what's our list of what you gone to Italy? Who told you that? The Bane told us that. You've seen Rod? Yes, I've seen Rod. Went to his school. You don't mind, eh? I'm his father, you know. If you'd read the correspondence from the separation orders, you'd know you're not allowed access to him. What correspondence? You were sent copies of everything. I've been moving around a bit, you know. Don't tell me. That's one of the reasons you're not fit to see him. Abandonment, me solicitor. Oh, I don't even care what your solicitor calls. I'm not bothered with the legalese. I'm bothered with me kid, right? And if you take him off to Italy, I'm never going to see him again, am I? So what will be different? Well, I'll tell you what will be different. The kid will be different, won't he? Because he's English, man. He was born here. His roots are here. All his friends are here. You know, is he going to turn up being brought up in the... Where is it? Milano. <laughs> Milano. I suppose that's Italian for Milan, is it? You're talking a language already. Look. He'll turn out a lot better there than he will living here. And who's this Sandro Gadji? He's my boyfriend, and as soon as the divorce is final, he'll be my husband. Well, what sort of bloke is he? Well, he's not you, are, so there's a marked improvement. Well, a waiter, is he? How do you know that? <laughs> well, he stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, any whopper chinky that arrives on teens says he's bound to be a waiter. I mean, he didn't come up here to build ships, you know. He'll be opening his own trattoria in due course. He's dad's sick at the moment, and that's why Sandro's going back to help him with the business. <laughs> Yeah, so, so every time I want to see me kid, I've got to hop on a dear flight to Milano, have I? Eh? I told you, you don't have access. I can get it, can't I? I'm his legal dad, are you know. Are you going to take me to court, are you, Ars? I would love that. I'd love my day in the dock telling a few long overdue home truths. Oh, man, you haven't got a leg to stand on. You've been out of his life for three years. I've, been, I've had to be working abroad, man, haven't I? I had to go to Deutschland, and then the Falklands. The Falklands, don't tell me that wouldn't have an emotional sway with the courts of this country. You weren't there. During the hostility? That was their journey aftermath. Oh. And one of the things that got us through was the thought of putting a real quid away for the Burns future, man. Well, we saw precious little of it. But and I then you went traipsing around America. That must have made a hole in it. I mean, those boots oh, started sh punchy. Shut up, man, Marjorie, will you? Shut up. Look, man, we can stand here arguing we're blue in the face, right? It's going to do no good. Because we're never going to agree on nothing. We never could, we never will, right? But I don't care what you think, right? I just care about me, Ben. I want to hear it from him. All right? Well, you're not going to, Oz. You're not seeing him, and that's that.
got good dress sense, Wayne. Never let me wear anything like that. It wouldn't suit your pet. Wayne's got the hips for it. Eh, this place I'm supposed to be meeting us. You know the anchor, what's it like? Oh, it's not sort of the place I'd go after dark. Ah, it's not full of headbangers, is it? Ah, you're probably going on to the princess after. Walter Ward Crumpet. Eh? Here, Mum, is it all right if I stay out till midnight? Not a minute later, mind. I'm only doing it for your sakes. Thought you might like to be alone. Oh, there's no need to go out on our account, Wayne. Yes, there is. Can you get him a key, please, Pat? Oh, yeah, I'll get the spare. Yeah, listen, we, if you pull the night, didn't drag it back here, eh? Yeah. Here, yeah, what'd you take me for, eh? An animal. Yeah. But I wouldn't abuse your Brenda's hospitality now, would I, eh? Yeah, maybe not now, but after a few drinks, it hasn't got a conscience, has it? Now, look, first of all, I'm not in a mood for chasing it, all right? And secondly, if I was, I've got a beautiful car, reclining seats, lovely eater, so it's a bloody sight warmer than your spare room. Hello. You must be Marjorie. I'm sorry? Um... I'm Barry Taylor. Uh, uh, you're expecting me. Are you a friend of my husband's? Yeah, that's right. It's old bookers, me and him. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he mention me? Just a minute. Douglas! It's a friend of yours, pet. Who are you? Uh, Barry? B B Barry Taylor, um... <laughs> Where's Oz? Oz? Oh. 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 I'm really sorry, there must be some... some mistake. The, um... Is this? Flat uh, 23, Emmanuel Shinwell House. Aye, oh, that's us, but there's no Oz. Um, Osborne? Oh, Marjorie Osborne. Oh. No, Pet Marjorie doesn't live here anymore. Ah, oh. This is pretty terrible. There's a whole bunch of us, you see. We're supposed to be staying with the three local lads. In, in fact, I made up the roster. Look, Wayne's supposed to be staying with Neville, and Moxie and Moore's supposed to be staying here. Oh, I'm very sorry. I'll sleep on the sofa and you can move in with the missus. Douglas! She's terrible. I mean, paid off the taxi. I've locked all my bags up here because the lift isn't working yet. Well, you can... Lug them back down again, can't you? Under the streets of an area like this. Hey, mate. Don't rubbish my area. We live here. And you don't... Uh, excuse me. I, I wonder if I could just use your telephone. <laughs> Asleep. Yeah, dead to the world. Right. Oh, dear. Cheers. Mm. It's nice, this, not too sweet. Ah, oh, yeah. Hey, listen, I've been thinking. Hmm? But, hey, I've not seen each other for a bit. Wayne's away out, the Ben's asleep. I thought maybe we could have an early night. Half past eight? Well, it's not on the box. I don't think I can get to sleep this early. Oh, yeah, Brenny, you know what I mean. Oh, all right, then. As it's a bit early, you better take the phone off the hook. All oh, right. And I'll nip up and put the electric blanket on, Nola. Eh? There's no need to. I did that 20 minutes ago. Norma? Yeah? Where have you put on my records? What? When I moved in here, I brought a whole stack of records with us. I put them in that cupboard there. Oh, I gave them a wee. You did what? We went for Ethiopia. That was my collection, Norma. Well, the Beans have left some cassettes around Look, what I'm talking about classics, I'm talking about Janis Joplin, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Oh, you can't tell me you are going to play them now. I was, as a matter of fact, I. Oh, well, if you're feeling nostalgic, Pet, why don't we get the family photograph album out? That'll be bummer. Are you picking them up? No, you can get a cab. It's a phone box, it's in. Buddy? Where are you? Oh, I've no idea, mate. Well, it's taken me bloody half an hour to find a phone book that hasn't been vandalised. Oh, you're in Newcastle. Oh, surrounded by drug addicts, muggers and bloody rapists, mate. Ah, of course, we forgot how you are supposed to be staying at others, weren't you? No, him and Moxie's uh, staying at his mother's. 
Uh, wait, she'll, she'll not be on the phone. There'll be no room there anyhow. Um, well, we we can't manage, you see, because my sister's already putting the uh, putting the bomber. Why don't you try Neville? Well, he can't be engaged forever, man. Banana bloody Roma. Clairvoyant, Brenda. Aye, aye. Coming, I'm coming. Oh, thank God. All right, driver. Thank you. Thanks very much. Oh, warmth, safety. Yeah. Where have you sprung from? Well, well, some place they call Gateshead. Talk about the bleeding concrete jungle. Ever? Uh, just a minute, Barry. Yet, do I? I hope you don't mind, mate. Anybody's froze to death out there. No, you're all right there. I'll get you some hot drink or something. Oh, you're in bed. I hope I'm having a bad moment. No, no. Ah, I wonder I couldn't get through. You left the bloody phone off the hook. Sorry, I'm not your genial host tonight, lads. I mean, any other time I'd have been happy to drag you around the flesh pots of the northeast, you know. But oh, it's just this thing with me, kid. You know, it's really heavy. Isn't it? I'm sure it does. I mean, I know what you think. I know what everybody thinks, but that man, I'm a bit irresponsible, a bit of a heed the bar, lunatic. Oh, all right, Moxie, all right. You're not always ruined with all your oars and what are you sell you now? Fair enough. Sorry, Oz. Well, I'm still his fella, isn't I? I'm still me kid. Put yourself in my place. Wayne, man. Put yourself in my place, man, with this business with the kid, man. It's your money, don't you? Eh? I mean, if your bird pissed up and left you, how would that feel, eh? She went back to Germany. Who's been talking to you, then? Anybody that I'm talking to hypothetically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, can you imagine if she had a sprung? Eh? She dragged it back to Dusseldorf. You'd never see it again. Imagine how that would feel. Yeah, well, I can, as it happens. You see, when I got back last weekend, I saw a very real change in eyes. Well, she was very warm and very positive. It was most encouraging. <laughs> that, that's why I went off with the fellas in the first place, you see, to give her her own space, as they say, you know. But then, the following night... No. No, 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 I'll tell a lie. It was the Monday. Because on the Sunday, she went over to Dudley Port to see her grand. Oh, I was at this hip. Yeah. I get very brittle bones at that age, you know. I think it's a lack of calcium in the water. I often notice how dry my cuticles get it. So when you saw Hazel next. What? Oh, oh well, well. I took her to this restaurant, you see. Oh, lovely place. Best there is. El Pepe. Anyway, I was telling her about the problem we've had with this conversion, like, you know. And, had a trouble we've had with getting permission to turn it into time-sharing units and, and the conversion and so on, etc., etc. Anyway, suddenly, in the middle of this crowded restaurant, it's ever so popular, even on a Monday, like, she jumps up in the middle of her zabaglione, knocks a chair over and runs in tears to the lavatory. Oh, dear. Well, what do you think, Brenda? I mean, do you, do you think these sudden mood shifts suggest a chemical imbalance in her metabolism? Do you, do you think she should be seeking medical advice? Well, I 
think it's probably a bit simpler than that, Barry. I mean, maybe she's not all that interested in planning permissions and time sharing, etc., etc. Do you mean I'm boring now? I never really thought of that, actually. Am I boring you? No, no. Thank you. Time, gentlemen, please. Right. Come to a decision. Oh, yeah, what was it? Indian or Chinese? <laughs> I'm talking about the kids, stupid. You get to the school and follow it. Nobody meets them. He's got to get the bus, right? So all we need is a motor, right? You've got one of them. So that's it, the job's squared. Oh, good. What have we got to do about it? We're going to snatch the kid. I'd miss the opportunity to see you play, do you? Here, listen. You're in 40, soft on that tackle. Never flinch the 50-50 bar. Right? You've got a good in, right? I'll see you up in the gear, mate. I'll be waiting for you. Hi, Sir Sandra. What? Where? How are you, the corner, Fran? <laughs> Moved the car, sat by the railings. Oh, well, that's just as well, because there's been a little bit of a hiccup. Oh, yeah, what now? Sandra was here. What, a boyfriend? Aye, aye. He's obviously here to take the kid him up to the match. Oh, nothing now. Well, look, we can't snatch the pair of them, all right? No, well, that's how. He didn't panic. I'll, uh, I'll get up and engage him in conversation, because I want to give him the one sword anyway. Yeah, well, what am I supposed to do, eh? Uh, well, look, the kid knows I'm here, right? Because I've just been having a bit crack with him, so... When the whistle guns, get away, explain who we are, tell me how to meet I mean, and get him in the car, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I don't know what he looks like, do well, I? He's playing number seven for the Reds. Number seven. Okay. Hold it, hold it, hold the ball! Make it cast for the vast throne, sir. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bobby, Dave, start the game! In England, always long the ball, running, 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 poop, poop. Hold on, hold on. There's some talent out there in us, son. Of course. But uh, you look, these boys, they're eight, nine, uh, ten years old, OK? Right, yeah. Well, all they do is they play on a grown-up field. So what is it? Well, it's too big. All they learn about is, is a space. Running, running, running. In Italy, they play on the streets, they play on the beach. They learn to pass, they learn to control, they learn to hold the ball. Ah, oh, well, I suppose you've got a point, mate. However, in Anglaterra, they learn stamina, did not it? Which is bloody handy when you're playing the longest football season in the world, killer. Too long, too many games. Yes, ah. get in! <laughs> See the way that number seven just slipped into the 18 yard boxing and. Oh, straight in. That's a, my boy. Eh? I teach him. Uh, excuse me. You, you, yes. Number seven. Come in. You played a right stormer, you did. Thanks. Your dad was well proud of you. He does, yeah. Yeah, of course he is. Of course he is. Um, he told me to come and fetch her. Come on. So what, you, you, you come here every week, watch every game like this? Oh, aye. Yeah. Uh, today they don't play so good. Uh, hey, last week, the boy, he get the hat trick. Get <laughs> away. Oh, Shit, right. bugger, eh? <laughs> yeah, aye. Right, well, ta-ra. Right, here we are. You sure call the BMW 520? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great motor. Yeah, we're coming up in. Your dad's up the road, all right? We'll go and pick him up. Right, burn rubber. So, uh, how 
are you? I'm Terry Atkinson. Oh, that's not the kid. He's not me dad. Oh, bloody hell. I thought it was funny because my dad's on the oil rigs. Is he? Well, you had no business getting in this man's car, did you? Let that be a lesson to you. Have I take lifts off strange men? Yeah, even if the car is a BMW. Well, who are you looking for, then? What? Mm. Nobody. Nobody. Me and him are, uh, Me and him are school board inspectors. We go around schools testing kids like you on their reflexes about things like this. And you've just failed. Failed. Miserably. Mm. However, however, we'll forget it this time. On condition, you say nothing to your friends, right? And we say nothing to the headmaster. Great, thanks a lot, sir. Right, OK, now watch the road. You great pillickers. Me? Me? You're the one that snatched the wrong kid. You're the one that's told me number seven. Oh, aye, aye, man, but you pinched the wrong number seven, didn't you? What up you the game? How was I supposed to know, eh? I've never set eyes on your bloody kid. Well, look, look, for future reference... For future reference, you must be bloody joking. Brod, your father, you sure he was here? Of course you have, Sandra. She can talk to you, man. You do things on the spur of the moment, or without ever thinking them through. I mean, where are we going to take the lad, eh? Well, I wasn't going to hang on to him, man. I only wanted 24 hours with him. To find out how he felt about this trip abroad, man. Mm. Find out how he felt about this Sandro Gadji. And she wouldn't let us anywhere near the burn, so I had to do what I did, didn't I? Well, she'll be even less disposed to let you see him now. Ah, so you met the Italian in question, did you? Ah, yes, we exchanged one or two words, yes. What sort of person did he seem then, as? Well, he seemed perfectly affable and pleasant and polite, but, I mean, you can't have gone on that, can you? I mean, he's a weirdo, he's trained to be. Oh, come off it, Oz. What? You said in the car that he was a nice enough sort of bloke. Ah, but they're my first impressions, weren't they? I mean, he's got to be a bit macy if he wants to lob up with me, Marjorie. Shall I do another pot? Aye, oh, I shall. I'll give you a hand. No, I'll do it first. So when do they leave, then? Where? Uh, uh, next week. If you ask me, I mean, just in my opinion, I, I think living in Italy might benefit the lad. I mean, he'd have the climate. When he comes back, he'll be bilingual. What a wonderful advantage. <laughs> I've only spent one night in this area, and I tell you, it was a pretty terrifying experience. You can't what touch a beer so one night, man. Well, man. We've well all seen like Wolverhampton, you know. It's not exactly Beverly Hills, is it? Eh? Here we are. Oh, you didn't need to do that. I would have seen to it. Oh, that's all right. Glad to get out of the smoke. Oh, you've not left your wife, have you? Run off with a sailor. I do, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Honestly, it's been I can't break hotel here this week. I'm thinking of leaving my job at the hospital and taking up marriage guidance. We'll be off in a couple of days and you can get some peace of mind. Yep, Brenda. The cat's not found yet, pet. No, could you come and have a word with the, the lads, please? Brenda, uh, we're all agreed. We think Oz has got a case here. I mean, we think that uh, he should see his young lad before he's whisked off to a foreign country. Oh, I quite agree, Dennis. Uh, the main problem is the situation with Marjorie is delicate, to say the least. I mean, she has to understand that us seeing his son won't be a threat to her. I mean, that's only right and proper. Uh-huh. So uh, we thought the best way to convince her would be... Um, if you had a word with her. Who wants to taste? Oh, you're the expert, pet. I let it breathe? Oh, don't be daft, man. We just want to hurl it down, we're next. <laughs> well, cheers, pet. I'll tell you something. Sandro's the only dad Rod's ever had. It's wonderful with him. He teaches him things, he talks to him, he explains things. Actually, in spite of all the circumstances, Oz admitted he quite liked him. Oh, my God. That's what Sandro said. I'm telling you, Brenda, I couldn't stand it if him and us got power. Oh, hello, Brent. Hello, Wayne. Are you all on your own? Yeah. Lads have gone down the pub, said I'd babysit. That's nice of you. I didn't fancy it. And, uh, I wanted to speak to Christo, you know? Sort of privately, like. Yeah. I'm sure that's too much, Wayne. It's cheap rate, after all. Yeah, but there was uh, quite a lot of heavy dialogue tonight. Oh, dear. Look, there's some Quantro on that sideboard over there. Why don't you pour both one in? Yeah. 
So, she come to a decision yet? Yep. She's going to have the baby. Well, that's a relief. I am glad. But she ain't going to have me back. So, the good news is I'm going to have a kid by the woman I love. And the bad news is I'll probably never get to see it. It's ironic, isn't it? You and us have similar problems. How'd you get on with Marjorie? Well, she's agreed to let him see the boy. Took two bottles of Chianti, though. You're a marvel, you are, Brenda. Here, you don't fancy popping over to Dusseldorf, do you? Doing the business on Krista, eh? <laughs> I used to work. Yeah? Well, not here, exactly up the river. Wild hair and slip with you. Never knew me, Granda. No, no. He was a riveter. Hard man. Proud man. But the job killed him in the end. That's why you never got to meet him. Remember this? It's funny. He built ships what went all over the world. And yet he never left Tainside. I think that's how come I'm a bit of a wanderer, you know, I've got a bit of a jibbo in it. Because I said to myself, when I was about your age, I said, that's never going to happen to me. Me, not that I'm a fear of hard grafting out, you know. It's just, way. Well, you know, there's a great big world out there. Well, that's, that's how come I'm pleased that you got to hit me, you know. Know that I know how you feel about it. Because, I mean, it's... It's got to do you good, hasn't it? I mean, when you come back, you'll be able to... Paul Yormo, Taliano, as you see it. Give you a better idea what the world's about. And it has to improve your ball control, doesn't it? Yeah? Just says I'm very fortunate. I will. Teacher's right for once. I'm listening, friends. Here. Right now, you'll make new ones, man. Anyway, you'll be back, won't you? I mean, <laughs> hope we'd leave this for long, yeah? Great. Great, well, have a great time. But yeah, listen. You might be one of the world now, but never forget your roots, son. Right? You'll always be a Geordie, no matter where you go. Because this is a place what shaped you, made you what you are. All right? Oh, God. I'll be the same, son. Crazy. 